At number 10, Rock Hudson. Imagine taking one of the biggest secrets about who you really are to your grave. That's essentially what happened with famed Hollywood actor Rock Hudson. Rock was one of the hottest leading males in Hollywood in his heyday, but he lived with a huge secret for his whole life and people didn't end up finding out about it until after his passing. When Rock passed away in 1985, it was revealed that he had died from AIDS. He became one of the first and most famous Hollywood celebrities to pass away from the illness. Because the illness was so heavily associated with being gay, speculation began to float around saying that Rock had been hiding his sexuality from the public this whole time. This all turned out to be 100% true as friends and family of Rock confirmed what the public had been thinking in a biography on the actor. In the book, it was revealed that he had an ex-boyfriend named Lee Garlington and he was described as Rock's true love. Rock's secret was really only known by his closest friends and family and an inner circle of Hollywood and a lot of them fought to keep his sexuality a secret in order to preserve his career. I couldn't imagine how tough it would be to have to keep such a big part of who you are a secret from the world. At number 9, David Cassidy. Oftentimes we try our best to be open and honest with our struggles in life, but for some it's hard to share some of the things that you might not be too proud of. This is what caused actor David Cassidy to keep a pretty big secret from the public that wasn't actually revealed until after he passed away. Before he passed away, David shared with the public his struggles with dementia. Fans believed that the actor was suffering from the disease and so when news broke of his death, people just assumed that it was the dementia that ultimately took him. But it wasn't until the documentary about the actor called David Cassidy The Last Session came out that the public learned the truth about David's health. It turned out that the actor was never actually diagnosed with dementia and that this wasn't what was harming his health. Instead, it was alcohol poisoning that he was struggling with and that ultimately took his life. In the documentary, the actor admitted to everything, saying, quote, There is no sign of me having dementia at this stage in my life. It was complete alcohol poisoning, and the fact is, I lied about my drinking. End quote. One of the documentaries produced Producers spoke out about having known about the actor's struggles before the public where they said quote, We didn't want to exploit him, but ultimately he was honest about what killed him and we decided that his legacy would be best served if we shared that. End quote. Before we carry on talking about some of the juiciest celebrity secrets, why not take a brief moment to leave a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far. And while you're at it, why not subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this one. At number 8, Gene Wilder. When someone is diagnosed with a serious illness, it becomes a very tough and very personal decision of whether or not to tell people about it. I know people who chose to keep their illness a secret until the end, and this is exactly what actor Gene Wilder did. Gene passed away in 2016, but it wasn't until after he died that the public learned about the secret that he was keeping in regards to his health. It turned out that the actor had been battling Alzheimer's for over three years before he passed away. After learning this, a lot of people wanted to know why this news was kept secret from the public and the reason behind it is so touching. Gene didn't reveal his condition to the public because he wanted people to remember him as he was and not someone who was sick. He wanted to keep the smiles on the faces of his fans. In a statement released by Gene's family, they elaborated on the situation saying, quote, the decision to wait until this time to disclose his condition wasn't vanity, but more so that the countless young children that would smile or call out to him, there's Willy Wonka, would not have to be then exposed to an adult referencing illness or trouble and causing delight to travel to worry, disappointment, or confusion. He simply couldn't bear the idea of one less smile in the world. End quote. At number 7, Corey Hyam. Unfortunately, as much as there's glitz and glam in Hollywood, there's also a dark side, one of those dark sides being harming and manipulating others. This is sadly something that actor Corey Hyam experienced as a child actor in Hollywood. Both he and his best friend Corey Feldman experienced the dark side of Hollywood, and though Feldman has been pretty outspoken about what he endured, Hyam on the other hand kept that top secret. The one thing that he kept absolutely hidden was the identity of the person who seriously harmed him. Haim went to the grave knowing the identity of the person who harmed him, but this secret isn't completely lost as it's alleged that Corey Feldman actually knows who did it. Feldman tried in the past to get his friend to expose the person who caused him so much pain, but Haim refused because he was so scared that this individual would try and hurt them again. Haim made Corey promise that he would share the story of what happened to them if he died, and Corey did share some details, but again, the identity of the person who hurt Corey Haim remains a secret. 
At number six, Sally Ride. Up next, we have another celebrity who unfortunately didn't get to live their life as open as they should have been able to, as they went to the grave with a huge secret. Astronaut Sally Ride was the first American woman to go to space. She became widely known for her presence in the NASA community, promoting education and interest in space, and specifically devoted much of her life to helping girls excel in STEM. She did a lot for her community, especially women and young girls, but there was another community that she was a part of that no one really knew about until after she passed away. When Sally passed away in 2012, her title grew to not only be the first American woman to go to space, but also the first astronaut to be acknowledged as gay. Sally's sexuality was never public knowledge until her obituary named a woman named Tan O'Shaughnessy as her partner of 27 years. Halfway number 5, Fake Names the vast majority of Hollywood A-listers do not use their real names, instead they concocted a stage name. This is done for a variety of reasons, sometimes just because their old name isn't as flashy, but other times the reasons are pretty dark. For some examples of celebrities with fake names, Martin Sheen's real name is Raymond Antonio Gerard Estevez, Jamie Foxx's name is Eric Marlon Bishop, and Marilyn Monroe's real name was Norma Jean Mortensen. Then other times a name change can be used to hide nepotism. Like for instance, Nicolas Cage's real name is Nicolas Coppola, and he's the nephew of Francis Ford Coppola, a famous Hollywood director. This familial connection landed Nick Cage his first role in the movie, Peggy Sue Got Married. Other times, a name change can be to hide racism. Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. actor Chloe Bennett, real name Chloe Wang, said, quote, Hollywood is racist and wouldn't cast me with the last name that made them uncomfortable. In at number four, stuntmen regularly lose their lives. Stuntmen are a very common thing on movie sets, because A-list actors aren't able to do the stunts that we see in a lot of action movies. But fans might not know what a dangerous job that it is and stuntmen regularly get critically injured or even lose their lives. And for how vital their role is to these movies, they are not paid fairly. The average stunt person pulls in about 250 k a year, which sounds great, but is nothing compared to the about $20 million that the movie stars are making. Big name stars are obviously the ones that sell the tickets, but they're not the ones who put their lives on the line. During the filming of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1, Daniel Radcliffe's stunt double David Holmes got hit by a staged explosion, and he was so seriously injured by the fragments that he suffered a neck break that left him fully paralyzed. Then on the set of Deadpool 2, a stuntman lost their life during a car crash scene. In at number 3, Substance Misuse Following the release of the biopic Judy, we got to see the horrible practices the movie execs would use to get their talent to do what they wanted, specifically using illicit substances to wake the actors up and keep them on set working for very long hours. According to a 1982 New York Times article, use of these substances became so common that movie insurers would put clauses in their contracts to cut losses from these sorts of incidents, because several deaths and injuries on set stem from the use of these substances. In her 2013 memoir, Debbie Reynolds, the female lead for the 1952 musical Singing in the rain, recalled that when her grueling schedule started to take a toll on her health, a studio executive told her to quote, take vitamin shots from his doctor. Then Judy Garland revealed her mother would give her quote, pep pills to ensure she had enough energy to film all day. Because of the toll these substances took on her health, Judy unfortunately passed away at the age of 47 because of an OD from these substances. In at number 2, inappropriate behavior runs rampant. So I'm gonna have to dance around the subject a bit for this one, but the things that have been exposed during the Me Too and Time's Up era are not new and have been happening for decades. Harvey Weinstein wasn't the first and only power player in Hollywood to use his power to get women to do what he wanted. And this all goes back to the idea of the quote casting couch, where you are expected to do sexual favors to these executives in exchange for a role. And there are many examples of this behavior taking place in Hollywood. Even worse, this behavior can also happen against one study even found that 94% of women employed in the American film industry have experienced sexual harassment or worse. This is a staggering number that should make everyone push for change. And finally, at number one, discrimination problem. The problem of diversity in Hollywood is something that's being brought up more and more over the years. And when we look at some of the stats, it's pretty wild. Only one woman has ever won the Oscar for Best Director, and that was Catherine Bigelow for the 2008 movie The Hurt Locker. Also, only one African American has ever won the Oscar for Best Original Screenplay in the history of the Academy. That was Jordan Peele in 2018 for Get Out. But the problem is not only in the cast and crew of the movies, it's the higher up of the business in general. A 2016 Washington Post investigation reported that 96% of Hollywood's decision makers 
workers were white and 87% of them were male. Clearly a large gap between those demographics and what we see in society today. A study of 100 movies released in 2016 also showed that about 70% of speaking roles in that year's top 100 films were white, leaving 30% to account for black, Asian, and Hispanic people. Another shocking stat was that just 31% of speaking characters were female. In at number 10, Janet Jackson. It's very rare that a celebrity in Hollywood is able to keep their relationship or marriage for that matter under the radar. However, Janet Jackson has been able to keep her multiple marriages and subsequent divorces all a secret from the tabloids. First, she was married to singer-songwriter Renee Elizondo in 1991, and that union remained under wraps until she filed for divorce in 2000. She then managed to keep her next marriage to billionaire with Sam Almana in 2012 a secret as well. This marriage actually really ended up changing Janet as she moved to London and abandoned her look to offer a more conservative garb in the line with Almana's Muslim religion. The couple wed two years after they met, and much to everyone's surprise, the then 50 year old Janet announced that she was pregnant with son Issa, who was born in January of this year. To even greater surprise, Janet then announced her separation from Almana four months later. In at number nine, Kathy Griffin. Kathy Griffin is typically all about the laugh, so it's really hard to believe her when she's talking about her late brother, a convicted pet. The public first learned about her older brother Kenny in her best selling autobiography My Life on the D List and in the book Kathy spoke about growing up with her brother and how she felt a very violent energy whenever he was around. She even admitted to witnessing him beating up his own wife. What's just as disturbing was when Kathy explained how he was sexually inappropriate with her from the time that she was just a little girl. Ultimately this shaped the way that she perceived the world and herself as she grew up. Kenny Griffin ended up going to prison and eventually passed away. In and of eight, Rose McGowan. Ever since the beginning of the Time's Up and Me Too movement, actress Rose McGowan has been an outspoken force for change. As a result, she's been very open about her own personal secrets involving mental illness and sexual abuse. Growing up, her life was plagued with pain because her parents belonged to a cult called the Children of God. According to Rose, the members believed in free love and so she was raised in a commune where mistreating women was just normalized. She even cited that men in the cult would regularly mistreat women and force them to act as servants. In at number 7, Holly Madison. Having frequently visited the Playboy Mansion when she was a 20 year old college student in Los Angeles, the aspiring actress decided to move into the house a year later in 2001. The Oregon native who was familiar with Playboy and had been a fan soon became Hugh Hefner's lead girlfriend and the two appeared to fall madly in love. Over the course of their seven years together, their untraditional relationship was followed on the E! Channel series called The Girls Next Door. Holly acted as the loyal wife figure alongside co-stars and fellow girlfriends Kendra and Bridget. However, in a bizarre series of events, Holly left the mansion claiming that Hugh had refused to marry her. That being said, this is exactly how Hef wanted things to appear to the general public. In her memoir titled Down the Rabbit Hole, she spoke openly about their relationship and revealed some deep rooted secrets that Hugh never wanted us to know. Apparently he knew that she was unhappy and just ignored her. Upon reflecting on it she said that even though she gave 7 years of her life the man could barely have a conversation with her. In at number 6, Melissa Joan Hart. Melissa Joan Hart may be a happily married mother of three, but during her time as Sabrina the Teenage Witch, she partied like every other Hollywood star. In the 1990s, she appeared to be this squeaky clean actor, but that was just an image put forth by executives. In her tell all book called Melissa Explains It All, she speaks very openly about all the secret stories that she had to keep under wraps while acting in Hollywood. In one portion of the book, she says that she experimented with weed, ecstasy, mushrooms, and mescaline for about a year and a half. Looks like her broomstick wasn't the only thing that was getting her high. Am I right? Up top. No? Okay. On top of that, she spilled crazy details about making out with a woman in a limo and then heading to a Maxim photo shoot while still high. Then revealing that it was her third or fourth time on ecstasy for this photo shoot. Although all this bad behavior, she says, is attributed to the bad crowd that she was hanging around with. I think she claimed also that Paris Hilton once offered her cocaine at a party, but obviously she denied. In at number 5, Lance Armstrong. In 2012, champion cyclist Lance Armstrong denied that he ever relied on performance enhancing drugs. He referred to the doping allegations against him as outlandish and heinous. However, when the US anti-doping agency revealed compelling evidence, the cyclist house of lies began to crumble. The agency released about a thousand pages of evidence in doping allegations against Armstrong and his teammates. This led to him being stripped of seven Tour de France titles and bronze Olympic medal, plus his secret forced him to step down as chairman of the Livestrong Foundation. Armstrong would later give a detailed account of his doping to Oprah Winfrey in 2013. You know, I view this situation as um, one big lie. 
that I repeated a lot of times. In at number four, Arnold Schwarzenegger. The secret that Arnold kept ended up being the bombshell that destroyed his marriage. Just five days after Arnold's then wife Maria Shriver gave birth to their fourth son in 1997, the couple's housekeeper, Mildred Patricia Baina, also gave birth to a son by the same action star. He kept this child of his a secret until he completed two terms as California's governor in 2011. Then he finally confessed his infidelity to Shriver and later the public. All it took was the media identifying the mystery baby mama and thus the celebrity scandal had been completed. There have always been celebrities that kept their kids out of the public eye, but nothing in terms of what Arnold was able to pull off by keeping this all a secret for so long. Imagine seeing that kid and be like, this kid looks like Arnold's son. Is that Arnold's son? In at number three, Charlie Sheen. No one has really been attacked in the press like Charlie Sheen has. Not saying he hasn't earned some of his controversies, but let's just say that there are some very shady people in this world. The notorious actor appeared on NBC's Today Show in 2015 to announce that he was HIV positive. Charlie had been diagnosed with HIV four years prior and finally revealed his secret after several people actually tried to blackmail him. Allegedly, there were some people threatening to reveal this secret unless he gave them $10 million. I'm here to, to admit that I am in fact uh, HIV positive. Um, and I, um, I, 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 I have to put a, a, a stop to this, this, this onslaught. If the timeline is four years from this interview, then his diagnosis would have come right as this whole controversy with the show Two and a Half Men started. You know, the one where he said in a bunch of interviews that he had tiger blood and Adonis DNA. Like, it's no wonder with that much press on him already that he didn't want to also reveal what could even be perceived as a weakness to his health. In at number two, Drake. This one was a huge reveal because for so long, people were just simply speculating on whether or not Drake was dating someone. So when Pusha T released a track with a line directed at Drake that said, you are hiding a child, let that boy come home, Adonis is your son. Everyone that was watching that feud had this jaw dropping moment when Drake finally revealed his secret son named Adonis. How did Pusha T know this? Drake would later record a song called Emotionless that explained why he had kept his son hidden from the public. He just didn't want to expose his son to the world that would have had their eyes on his every move. And it's understandable, but I believe it baffled people because it wasn't like he was like happily married to someone. He, he appeared to just be this rolling stone that was always rumored to be romantically involved with one celebrity or another. Last but certainly not least in our number one spot, Justin Timberlake and Jessica Biel. Like many celebrities on this list, JT and JB have had an awful time trying to keep their personal lives out of the public eye. One thing that has certainly helped keep a lot of secrets is well, this pandemic. Pandemic. I mean, if the paparazzi can't come within six feet of you and everyone's on lockdown in their homes, the tablets must be just suffering right now. Although the Daily Mail still found a way to honor some celebrity secrets when they revealed that Jessica had secretly given birth to a baby boy. The family are thought to be in Big Sky, Montana, where they have been spending time amid the coronavirus pandemic, and both of them have neglected to share any details whatsoever about the pregnancy, so I guess we'll have to check the Daily Mail if you want info on that celebrity secret. At number 10 is Shaq's embarrassing trip to Walmart. The NBA Hall of Famer is one of the greatest basketball players of all time and is also hilarious, by the way. Honestly, I feel like his comedy is a little underrated, not gonna lie. Even though he's retired now, he still maintains his funny personality on social media and in live interviews. During one of his interviews in 2018, while he was on The Late Late Show, he shared the story about a time that he went to Walmart and his credit card got declined. The incident happened after he was traded from Miami to Phoenix and he needed furniture for his new apartment because he didn't want to wait for stuff to arrive from Miami. So he went to Walmart and spent $70,000, but his credit card got declined several times and he actually had to call American Express with everyone watching. $70,000 at Walmart, what are you buying? Moving on to number nine is Madonna opens up about her sex life. Leave it up to Ellen to add a game to her show that has her celebrity guests opening up about their personal business. She added this classic party game, Never Ever Have I Ever, and has them answer with an answer card that says they have, or if they flip it, it says they have never. Madonna was paired with Justin Bieber to play, and Ellen asked them, Never Ever Have I Ever had sex with more than two different people in one day. Justin and Ellen both held up the I have never card, but Madonna held up the I have. Unfortunately, we didn't get any more details about who her two for one hookups were, but we did learn that she is just a little more frisky than we thought. 
Cruising into our number eight spot is the time that Diddy confessed the craziest place that he had sex. Ellen DeGeneres is back at it again with a fun game to get some gossip about her guests, and one of them is called Hot Seat. Her guests sit with her in two hot seats and they fire off questions that they have to answer, and then they quickly hit the buzzer when they are done. Apparently, her show just has no shame in asking people about their sex life because she asked him, Where is the craziest place you've had sex? But he had no shame in answering and revealed the secret that he's actually had sex at Nobu, which is one of the most famous and popular restaurants in LA. So next time you're in at Nobu, just know that he had sex there. In spot number seven is Kim Kardashian accidentally revealed the gender of her child. In the world of Hollywood, media outlets would fight to their death to find out a secret like this so that they could be the first to publish it. But Kim didn't give them the chance because she accidentally let it slip during an interview on Ellen. Her and her husband Kanye West revealed that they were going to have their third child through a surrogate, but didn't want to reveal the gender. She screwed up though when she was telling a story about her daughter North wanting to keep all the new baby's toys in her room. She said that the day after the shower, North went up to her and said, Mom, since baby sister's not here, I think I need all of her toys in my room and I'll play with them and make sure they're okay for baby sister. Ellen was quick to point out that she just told us it is a girl because she's having a baby sister. Oops. And number six is a time that Denise Richards talked about her lesbian fling. Most people are used to seeing her as Charlie Sheen's former wife and also the mother to his kids. But when she did an interview on the Howard Stern show, she revealed some spicy information about her life outside of Mr. Sheen. She admitted that she had hooked up with a female friend. She wouldn't reveal who it was, but said that she's also a well-known Hollywood star. She talked about it and said, I just met her through friends and work and stuff. I I was just curious. We were curious. She was a girly girl and she's beautiful. You would know who she is. Come on, Denise. We need more than that. Tell us who it is. I want to know. Halfway number five, Mariah Carey. It was revealed that Mariah Carey was suffering from bipolar disorder, but the unfortunate part is that it wasn't Mariah herself that shared it with the world, but rather her sister. Because of her sister's comments, Mariah opened up about her sister and the issues that she has that affects Mariah as well. Mariah's sister Allison claimed that Mariah had been struggling with the disorder for years, but the relationship between the sisters is more than a little strange, and they allegedly hadn't spoken since 1994 at the time. Allison has been arrested multiple times for illegal activities, and she once told undercover cops that she could quote, give them a sweet, sweet fantasy. Allison also calls out Mariah for not helping her with her medication, since she deals with her own issues and is in need of money to pay for the medication. Because of this, Allison has tried to extort her sister multiple times for money, which I'm sure is incredibly exhausting for Mariah. And at number four, Lori Loughlin. This is one I'm sure you know of, but some big names in Hollywood were exposed big time when Operation Varsity Blues found that Lori Loughlin and Felicity Huffman had bribed their child's way into prestigious universities. Loughlin and her husband, fashion guru Massimo Giannulli, were accused of paying $500,000 to get their daughters, Olivia J. Giannulli and Bella Giannulli, into USC on the crew team. When, as I'm sure that you already know, they never even played the sport. In light of everything, the family lost tons of sponsorship deals, and Lachlan's contract with Hallmark came to an abrupt end. And in the end, Lori was sentenced to two months in prison for her crimes. And now the family's reputation will probably never be the same. And at number three, Demi Moore. Demi Moore spilled everything about her marriage to Ashton Kutcher in her 2019 memoir, Inside Out. And there are things in the book that I'm sure she was reluctant to bring to light again. In the book, she talks about the tumultuous eight-year marriage to Ashton Kutcher, giving details on the fact that they had a threesome because Ashton essentially begged for it. After it happened, Moore was regretful about the situation, but it seemed that Ashton was not, and only made him more distant in the marriage. Writing in her book, quote, because we'd brought in a third party into our relationship, Ashton said that blurred the lines and to some extent justified what he'd done. Speaking about the fact that it led to him cheating down the line. But the marriage was over after he admitted to cheating on her with a 21 year old woman in 2011, adding in an interview that the divorce is the reason she had a relapse with her alcohol addiction. Saying in the Red Table Talk interview, quote, the addiction was in the codependency. My addiction to Ashton was probably almost more devastating than alcohol because it took me seriously away emotionally. And because she had spilled all of these secrets, she was asked why she decided to talk about all this now. With her responding, quote, I think my desire was to really get to a place where I'm okay to really be seen. Adding, quote, when there isn't anything to protect, that's a great spot. And at number two, Allison Mack. The case of Smallville actor Allison Mack was one of the most shocking and disturbing in recent years. On April 20th of 2018, the actor was arrested in Brooklyn on charges of sex 
trafficking, along with other similar crimes. Apparently, she was heavily involved in a bad group of people called Nexium, and apparently, she was used to recruit women into the group. And then these victims were later exploited by the group in numerous ways. After a lengthy trial, Mac pled guilty to the charges. However, it's been over a year since she was sentenced, and no time has actually been given. So she's been on house arrest in her parents' house this whole time. And at number one, Meghan Markle. Since Meghan Markle became one of the most famous people on earth basically overnight, a lot has been exposed about her, a lot that I'm sure she wishes didn't. One thing is that her sister said she quote is a social climber with a soft spot for gingers. Okay. But one of the biggest secrets about Meghan that people are pretty convinced is true is that she used to author a shady blog about the industry. The blog was called quote the working actress and to give you an idea of some of the stuff she wrote about, the blog said it was documenting the ups and downs of a hustling young actress in the cutthroat world of Hollywood. In February 2018, the Daily Mail reported that impeccable sources from California confirmed that Meghan Markle wrote the blog, with an actor named Lance Carter telling Daily Mail, quote, yeah, it was definitely Meghan who wrote it. Then in Andrew Morton's biography, Meghan, a Hollywood Princess, the magazine included the working actress in a list of the royal's former jobs. So clearly her more public blog, The Tig, wasn't all she was writing. All right, everyone, that's all for the video today. Let me know what you're thinking about it down below. And were there any that I missed that could be in a part two? And at number 10, fake relationships. I think at this point it's clear that most Hollywood relationships are faked for PR. Occasionally these fake relationships actually turn into real love, but most of the time these fake couples split as soon as the movie comes out, making it painfully obvious. One of the most obvious cases of this was the on and off again relationship between Robert Pattinson and Kristen Stewart during the Twilight days. These two would always be in a relationship when their newest movies were dropping, but then a few weeks after the release, they would break up. Since they split almost immediately after the final Breaking Dawn movie was released, it's clear that it was all a lie. Also, the pair looked so uncomfortable when they were together, and now that we see what they look like in a happy relationship, it's clear that they weren't in one. And at number nine, paid paparazzi. If you've ever wondered why some celebrities look amazing in paparazzi photos, well, others don't, it's because a lot of celebrities hire their own paparazzi to make sure they never look bad in a photo. The most recent celebrity to get called out for using this tactic was Addison Rae. While Addison was out in New York, she happened to get a ton of great photos of herself out and about in the city, and Page Six called her out for tipping off the paparazzi about her location so she can get a ton of good pictures. Page Six called it, quote, a move straight out of the introductory course at the Kardashian Institute of Advanced Fame Grasp. Apparently, Addison specifically wanted good photos of her outfits so that she could become known for her style. This move has long been used by the Kardashians back when they were up and coming, and now it seems that Addison is taking tips from her new friends. And at number 8, Fake Bodies. It's no secret that almost everyone in Hollywood has had some work done. Usually it's minor things like Botox and fillers to maintain youthfulness, but some celebrities went through major changes before making it big, and these cosmetic procedures were the reason that it all happened. Apparently it's an open secret that celebrities will change their bodies to adapt to the times to maintain marketability. But the worst part is that most celebrities don't own up to these big changes, so fans will think these people are effortlessly perfect and it starts to impact the everyday person's self esteem. One of the most common procedures seems to be a nose job, and most celebrities Celebrities that are deemed au naturel have had it done. Blake Lively, Scarlett Johansson, and Jennifer Aniston are just some of the celebrities that fans are convinced had nose jobs, but they will never admit it to fans who think it's all elite genetics. In at number seven, award show corruption. Many fans assume that Oscars and Grammys are given to those who truly deserve it, but once you pull back the curtain, that's really not how it works. And an open secret is that anyone who wants to win one of these awards must campaign for it and basically bribe the judges. This can be in the form of actual money or things like vacations and expensive gifts. Back in 1981, actress Pia Zandora won the Best Newcomer Award for her role in the movie Butterfly. It was a shock to everyone until it was exposed that her husband paid off the voting members to ensure that she won. And over time, the practice did not get better. In 2011, publicist Michael Russell sued the Hollywood Foreign Press Association for firing him. He was trying to expose the corruption with the award show, and they didn't like that. The party settled the dispute out of court. And at number 6, cheating. Movies often take months to film. That's long, grueling hours away from family and friends, stuck with the small same group of people. Because of how it all works, movie sets are breeding grounds for extramarital affairs, especially if you're spending a lot of time with your love interest in the movie that you're hugging and kissing all day on set. There are truly too many examples to name, but there's a solid chance that one of your favorite actors cheated on their spouse during the filming of a hit movie. The most famous are Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt in Mr. and Mrs. Smith, and Kristen Stewart and director Rupert Sanders during the filming of their project. And obviously, this this happens a lot more than it's reported. 
Halfway number 5, Scientology. Scientology is a mysterious religion that happens to have a ton of A-list celebrity followers. It's been said that the founder of Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard, used celebrities because he knew that they would attract followers to this new religion. This is also the reason that the Church of Scientology has a huge luxurious building right on Hollywood Boulevard. In the 1950s, L. Ron Hubbard created the quote, Project Celebrity, a written program that offers rewards to Scientologists who bring in some of the biggest names in Hollywood. Today, some of Hollywood's biggest stars follow Scientology, including Tom Cruise, John Travolta, and Kirstie Alley. Apparently, these stars are rewarded with Butler-esque employees to do anything and everything for them. Former high-ranking members spoke out against this, claiming that they saw Tom Cruise use underpaid Scientology workers for years. And at number 4, Gender Pay Gap Yet another example of Hollywood being harmful to women is the gender pay gap between men and women in movies. And unfortunately, this still exists to this day. This issue came to the forefront in 2013 when the movie American Hustle was released. The movie showcases huge movie stars, but unfortunately was exposed that the female actors received less than their male counterparts. An email hack revealed that Jennifer Lawrence and Amy Adams received two points less on the revenue sharing agreement than their male co-stars Bradley Cooper and Christian Bale, despite the fact that both actresses are A-list actors. Around the same time, Meryl Streep, the actor with the most Oscars ever, came forward to say that even she was paid less than her male co-stars. House of Cards actress Robin Wright also said that she needed to be paid as much as Kevin Spacey or she would go public against Netflix. And at number 3, Animal Cruelty When making a movie, it's imperative that nobody is hurt during the production. This includes animals, and it's common to read, quote, no animals were harmed during the making of while watching a movie. But according to many reports out of Hollywood, that's not always true, and animals are often harmed on movie sets. Some of the worst examples include the near-drowning death of a tiger during the filming of Life of Pie, the hitting of a dog on the set of Eight Below, and the dozens of dead fish and squid that washed up on the shore over four days during filming of the Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. The second season of the HBO series Luck was actually cancelled after four horses died during the production. Apparently, they were overworked because the production wanted the horse racing to look as real as possible. The people on set also ignored warnings from humane animal monitors on the set, making it clear that they didn't care about the animals. Unfortunately, this loss of life had no repercussion. In at number 2, Hollywood Fixers It's long been rumored that bigwigs in Hollywood will hire fixers to do the dirty work for them. These are basically tough guys that will swoop in and do the dirty work that these powerful people can't get caught doing themselves. This idea was brought up again because of the series Ray Donovan. Back in the days of old Hollywood, where stars would sign their lives away to movie studios, it was common to have these fixers to deal with personal issues. It was rumored that these men would cover up pregnancies of their young stars, along with making accusations against powerful men go away. And these practices still happen today. A fixer named Anthony Pelicano was arrested after it was discovered that he sent threatening notes to celebrities along with a dead fish. Pelicano was allegedly employed by stars such as Michael Jackson, Chris Rock, Kevin Costner, and Steven Spielberg. And finally, at number one, the Illuminati. The Illuminati might be the most elusive group in Hollywood. Nobody is quite sure who they are, but everyone is pretty sure that some of the top celebrities in the world are a part of it. Most notably, Beyonce, Jay Z, Tom Hanks, and Lady Gaga. The subject of the Illuminati was brought to light again recently after David Dobrik did a podcast interview where he spoke about his experience with the Illuminati in Hollywood. He told the story to Zayn and Heath on their podcast where David revealed that a girl that he knew was approached by the Illuminati and she was told she needed to sacrifice someone to them if she wanted to get famous. Apparently, this girl called her mother who was okay to be the one sacrificed, but the girl did not end up going through with it. Months later, David and this girl were at a Hollywood party with old Hollywood A-listers. And when the topic of the Illuminati came up, the girl told the group about how she was approached and one of the A-listers told her not to get involved with them because the Illuminati ruined his best friend's life. Apparently, this A-lister's supposed best friend was Michael Jackson. In at number 10, Leighton Meester. You'd never be able to tell by how she carries herself today, but this Polish celebrity was actually born in a Texas prison while her mother was serving time for drug smuggling. Though her mother was allowed to spend 12 weeks in a halfway house with newborn Leighton, she was soon sent back to jail. Meester ended up living with her grandmother in Florida until her mother was released. At 10, her family moved to New York so that she could begin a career modeling, only to then pack up again four years later and head to Los Angeles. Once in Hollywood, she began auditioning for 
various roles while taking acting classes, but she found it difficult to relate to kids her age because of her unstable upbringing, an upbringing that she kept hidden for a very long time. Her breakout acting role was when she portrayed Blair Waldorf on Gossip Girl, a character whose mother was the owner of a fashion empire, which as you can imagine was a stark contrast from her actual childhood. Today though, she was worth an estimated $16 million. In at number 9, Selena Gomez. In typical rumor mill fashion, when singer Selena Gomez decided to cancel part of her world tour in 2013, the gossip magazines did all kinds of speculating as to why. They said she was battling a drug and alcohol addiction and listed a plethora of other unconfirmed conspiracies. The real reason that these types of stories kind of bubble up is because of how secretive celebrities are. Although, can we blame them? I'm sure there are some parts of their life that they just want to keep quiet. And turns out Gomez had been hiding a secret from the world, but it had nothing to do with indulging in addiction. Later on, Selena revealed to Billboard that she had to undergo chemotherapy to treat lupus, a chronic autoimmune disease. She mainly wanted to wait for the right time to talk about it, and when she did, she didn't want to be loud about the whole thing. Selena just wanted to wait so that she could properly use her platform to help spread awareness. In at number 8, Prince. Prince has always been a wild and eccentric character. I mean, in 1993, he literally changed his name to a symbol. If that's not the definition of an enigma, I don't know what is. Although this brilliant musician was hiding a big secret from the world. For his entire life, Prince had been coping with epilepsy, which is a serious medical condition. Although in 2009, he revealed this secret during an interview with PBS. In the interview, Prince told host Tavis Smiley, I'd never spoken about this before, but I was born epileptic. I used to have seizures when I was young. My mother and father didn't know what to do or how to handle it, but they did the best they could with what little they had. Although Prince said that after a while, he was able to keep his condition largely under control. He also noted though that this control over his epilepsy came by way of an angel that spoke to him. In at number 7, Katie Holmes. Just 5 days before Tom Cruise celebrated his 50th birthday, his wife of 5 years, Katie Holmes, filed for divorce in New York. The world was completely shocked by this secret being unearthed. The couple had been spotted together on the set of Oblivion in Iceland just days before and they were strolling along like nothing was going on. Everything's fine. Don't look at us. Apparently Holmes orchestrated her escape, if you will, from Cruz very carefully. She set up secret meetings with lawyers and prepared to battle for sole custody of their daughter, Suri. Now, although the details leading up to this was kept secret, if you were watching the tabloids, one could assume that she was using them to shift the public's perspective. Katie Holmes used the sympathies of the tabloids to convince people that she was just this kind of passive wife of Tom Cruise was a maniac. It's believable, right? The weirdest part was that right after her divorce, she had all of these events set up where there would be people there to photograph her. Normally, following a divorce, you would think that you'd, you know, maybe take some time to yourself, you know, take some time off from work maybe, but nope, nope. She just went right to the cover of the August issue of Elle magazine. In at number six, Caitlyn Jenner. Back in 1971, Jenner participated in their first decathlon, and by 1972, Jenner was competing in the decathlon at the Munich Olympics. At those Olympics, they finished 10 10th overall in the event, and in 1976, Jenner went on to win the gold in the decathlon at the Montreal Olympics and was declared by the media to be the world's greatest athlete. Jenner was able to accomplish all of this while living with a deep personal secret that wouldn't be shared with the public for, oh, I don't know, another 40 years? In 2014, Jenner announced that they were divorcing from longtime wife Kris Jenner, and just a year later, Jenner shocked the world when they revealed that they had undergone Jenner reassignment surgery. At the age of 65, Caitlyn Jenner introduced herself to the world, and by 2015, ESPN had awarded Jenner the Arthur Ashe Courage Award, and to this day, Caitlyn is one of the most prominent public figures to come out as transgender. Minor treatments. Halfway to number five, closeted LGBT plus actors. To continue along the lines of morality clauses, another use of those clauses were to closet LGBT plus actors, even forcing some of them into sham marriages just to keep up appearances. This part of the clause revolved around not, quote, forfeiting the respect of the public. If the actor breached this part of the contract and had a relationship that was not approved, they would risk losing their entire salary for the role. Also, if the actor was outed, that would mean the end of their career either way. Gay actor Rock Hudson's struggle with his identity was revealed in the biography All That Heaven Allows. In that book, it was exposed that a magazine planned to out him back in the day. At that time, Hudson's agent was the only person who knew the truth and proposed that he get married to squash the story. Hudson immediately married Phyllis Gates, but they divorced a couple of years later. The secret stayed with him until days before he passed away. And at number four, Buddy Epson. Back in the days of old Hollywood, the makeup and prosthetics weren't what they are today. And I'll Oftentimes, time the costumes that the actors would wear would be toxic. One fact is that the Wicked Witch's green face in The Wizard of Oz was made with toxic paint. Buddy 
Epson, who was supposed to play the Tin Man in The Wizard of Oz, did not do so because he had an extreme reaction to the aluminum dust from the makeup. Because of this reaction, he was replaced in the movie with actor Jack Haley. Epson was ultimately hospitalized and forced out of Oz's production. For years after the movie, Epson claimed that the makeup caused permanent breathing problems for the rest of his life. And at number three, Jack Nicholson's sister was his mother. This one isn't really related to Hollywood, more so a secret that a Hollywood actor kept for a number of years. Jack Nicholson kept a huge secret from the public almost his entire life, mostly because he didn't know the truth until he was an adult. His entire life, Jack was raised with a sister named June, who was 17 years older than him. But when his parents died, Jack's older sister revealed that Jack was actually her child and her parents raised him as their own to hide the stigma from a young pregnancy. And Jack's parents were actually his grandparents the whole time. And at number two, Rihanna's father had a second life. Rihanna has spoken in the past about her tense relationship with her father. Throughout her life, he was addicted to alcohol and cheated on her mother essentially their whole marriage. But one day a horrible secret was revealed and apparently the entire time he was married, Rihanna's father had a second family. He had three other children as well, two daughters and a son. At one point, Rihanna was even forced to sue her father because he was selling services involving her name and likeness, although she later dropped that suit. And finally, number one, hidden children. Being a movie star means that you need to be perfect 24 seven. That includes hiding pregnancies from the public or trying to make them go away. Celebrities like Kylie Jenner kept her pregnancy totally a secret until after the birth to ensure the media did not affect her. However, there are tons of celebrities who completely hid secret love children from the public. Aerosmith's frontman, Steven Tyler, had a secret child well in his heyday, so he and the mother decided to hide the paternity from the child. When Liv Tyler was eight, she found out the truth and so did the media. Apparently, she was forced to put the pieces of the puzzle together herself when she could no longer ignore the resemblance she had to the singer and his other kids. So starting off at number 10, we have Chris Jenner. Kris Jenner revealed one of her most regretful secrets in her memoir, Kris Jenner and All Things Kardashian. In the book, she gave details on her affair with Todd Waterman that happened while she was still married to Rob Kardashian. She wrote in her memoir, quote, we had sex everywhere, all the time, out of control, crazy, dangerous, wild sex. She admitted to doing it in cars, on the tennis court, in the pool house, and even the garage. Jenner opened up in interviews later that she thinks it was her age that caused her to make the mistake. Since she met Rob at the age of 18, then married him at 22, she was getting bored of their marriage after 10 years of being together. And when she was introduced to Todd, who was 10 years younger than her, she was smitten. Adding that people always think the grass is greener, but she deeply regrets her cheating. And at number nine, Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore has been opening up about her horrible childhood and all the terrible things she did when she was just a preteen. In her book, she revealed that she got into drugs when she was just 10 years old. Writing quote, when I was 10 and a half, I was sitting in the back seat of a car driven by a friend's mother. She started smoking pot. I wanted to try it for a long time, but I was afraid if I asked, she'd say, no way, Drew, you're too young. However, she offered me some, and I said, sure, I'll try it. I was shocked. But she had that look to say, isn't it cute, a little girl getting stoned? And she also just revealed on an episode of her show with Paris Hilton that she went to behavioral schools when she was younger because she was so out of control and she was locked in solitary many times. And at number eight, Woody Harrelson. Actor Woody Harrelson has been part of the film industry for decades now, and he's a true Hollywood legend. But while you might never expect him to have some familial skeletons in the closet, he does, and his father was actually a notorious hitman. And he actually committed the first assassination of a judge in the 20th century. But that was not his only one. He also killed a carpet salesman for $1,500 after a deal fell through. Apparently, Harrelson found out about his father's occupation when he was 12 years old. Charles Harrelson passed away in prison in 2009. And at number seven, Rihanna. Rihanna is one of the most successful female musicians of all time, but she's another star with some family issues that she tried to keep a secret. Apparently, one day out of the blue, Rihanna discovered that her father, Ronald Fenty, had another secret family. And that meant that Rihanna had two sisters and one brother that she never knew existed, with all of the three siblings having different mothers. Her father was also addicted to alcohol, drugs, and sex. But after some time, it seems that Rihanna has been the bigger person, and they've been able to repair their relationship. And at number six, Kathy Griffin. Kathy Griffin is a woman known for making everyone around her laugh. But like with a lot of comedians, Kathy used humor to cope with a lot of the bad she was dealt when she was younger. In her autobiography, My Life on the D-List, she speaks about the trauma she endured because of her brother, Kenny. She wrote that he was inappropriate with her very often, and that led her to have a lot of internal issues. She also claims that when she was around him, she felt a dark and even violent presence. 
She even spoke further in the book about some things that she witnessed in adulthood, saying that she once saw him hurting his own wife. He eventually went to prison, then ended up passing away. But the bad memories still live with her. We are halfway through and we have Justin Timberlake admitted to a hookup. He was another victim of Ellen's game of Never Ever Have I Ever, and he played with the infamous boy band NSYNC. They were all asked, Never Ever Have I Ever Slept With A Spice Girl. Justin was the only person to turn the card so that it said, I have. The audience began cheering and of course they wanted to know which Spice Girl it was, but he refused to tell. We'll leave it up to fans to come to the conclusion though that it was Baby Spice. They started posting a video clip of an interview she did back in 2004 when she was asked if she had a one nighter with Justin because those were the rumors going on at the time. She responded with, we hung out and partied a bit and he's very sweet. He spoke about this first cause otherwise I would have not said a word. He's very sweet. So she didn't really confirm nor deny. At number four, we have JLo snuck a man into her house. Now you're probably wondering why she would have to sneak a man into her house. Like she is an adult and she's also JLo, so she can basically do whatever she wants and invite people into her house at any time. But there is one thing she has to consider, and that is her kids, which is ultimately her biggest priority. During an interview one time, she was asked about her love life and if she has ever had to sneak a man into her house, and she revealed that she totally has. Fans were hoping she might spill the tea and tell us who it was, but she kept that little detail to herself and admitted that she has totally snuck a man in at night while her kids were sleeping. All right, guys, we have made it to number three, and it's a bit more serious. Melissa Joan Hart revealed on a talk show that she did drugs during her time as Sabrina the Teenage Witch. For a long time, she was the ultimate girl next door. Audiences fell in love with her instantly and she quickly became a teen star. But back in 2013, she got candid during an interview and dished details about her wild side. She said she had drug-fueled Hollywood nights and revealed shocking affairs with some of her co-stars at the time. She said, I experimented with weed, ecstasy, and mushrooms for about a year and a half. One of her most shocking stories was from 1999 where she said she took ecstasy one night at the Playboy Mansion, made out with a girl on the limo ride home, and then showed up to her Maxim photo shoot still high from the night before. Honestly, I would have never suspected this from Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Kinda ruining my childhood a little bit, kinda weird to think about, but hey. I don't judge. Taking over the number two spot is Leslie Jones used to work for Scientology. The SNL star was on the Ellen DeGeneres show when she was asked what job she worked before she was famous. Surely, she could have said any of her other jobs, like McDonald's or Walmart or something. I'm sure we all had a part-time job. But instead, she was honest and admitted that she used to be a telemarketer for Scientology. She said, I lived in Glendale. I needed to pay the rent and it was a very easy interview. I just acted crazy. They kind of still don't know I'm not a Scientologist. Scientologists. She cracked a joke to the camera and apologized to other Scientologists out there for revealing things. But she seemed to have no problem revealing the secret, despite all the controversy around the religion. In our number one spot is Holly Madison revealing dark secrets about Hugh Hefner. Many people would love to know all the juicy details of what really went on in the Playboy Mansion when Hugh Hefner was still with us. But thanks to his former girlfriend Holly Madison, we do. After being his number one girlfriend in the house and dating him for six years, she decided to write a tell all book called Down the Rabbit Hole back in 2015. The book exposed their age difference in the relationship and just everything that came along with it. She then went on to do some talk shows where she talked about personal experiences in their sex life, saying they used to engage in group sex in his bedroom and also admitted to the wild parties that they had at the house, claiming that some of the girls would actually be drugged at the party and then taken advantage of. Some of her claims were pretty serious and her former playmate said that she was lying and actually did not not defend her statements. So basically it's if you believe her or not. In the number 10, Mafia Connections. Back when Hollywood first started, it was rumored that mobster Mickey Cohen ran the Hollywood underworld. Back in 1950, it was apparently a known thing that Cohen ran many organized crime units in LA. And over the years, it's been revealed that a lot of big old Hollywood stars had connections to the mafia. Even singer Wayne Newton had a connection to the mafia, and it almost ended up costing his life. Newton was apparently friendly with Guido Panossi, who was a member of the Gambino crime family. But Newton claimed he had no idea that he had mob ties. Then in 1980, there was a lot of scandal around Newton and the Aladdin Hotel that was co-owned with mafia members. Rumors swirled that Newton was talking to police behind their backs. Then Newton was put on a witness list to testify against the family, which got him a legitimate threat against his life from the mafia. Thank God he was able to survive the ordeal. And at number nine, ageism. Getting older is a fact of life, but in Hollywood, they want to avoid it at all costs. 
and specifically for women, getting older means the end of your career. It's so bad that actors even try to hide their ages, so they can play younger roles. Actress Juni Hwang sued the website Internet Movie Database for revealing her true age to fans. Actress Jessica Lange has defied this ageism and has success in her 60s, but she admits it was more difficult as she got older. She said in one interview, quote, ageism is pervasive in this industry. It's not a level playing field. You don't often see women in their 60s playing romantic leads, yet you will see men in their 60s playing romantic leads with co-stars who are decades younger. In at number 8, fake fans. In the age of social media, followers are everything, and having tons of followers can mean the difference between getting the part or not. But sadly, a lot of these followers are not real, and it's been exposed that millions of social media followers are fake and are purchased to make it seem like the star is more popular. Some of the world's most popular celebrities are a part of this. Some of the worst offenders are Ariana Grande with 46% fake, Taylor Swift with also 46% fake, and Miley Cyrus with 45% fake. It's worth noting that the celebrity is not always responsible for the fake followers, but they usually are. In at number 7, all press is good press. We've all heard the famous saying, and it seems that celebrities don't care if they're getting good or bad press, they just want to be talked about. People might not know it's actually a PR strategy to get bad press. Sometimes the negativity helps to sell something, or it can take attention off something else. One example of this was back in 2014, when it was revealed that Kim and Kanye were going to be on the cover of Vogue. At the time, Kim was not a fashion icon, and people were outraged. Some readers even threatened to cancel their Vogue subscriptions, calling Kim a disgraceful and inappropriate for the iconic publication. Anna Wintour ended up going forward with the cover, and it was one of the most talked about issues of all time. We're not sure if it was all for press, but the negativity definitely helped to sell magazines. And at number 6, Body Issues Looking perfect is something that all celebrities struggle with, but having the perfect figure is sadly something that the industry forces you to have to be successful. Many celebrities have come forward to share their stories of disordered eating, which was caused by Hollywood bigwigs saying that they weighed too much. Even agents and managers have told a star that they need to lose weight in order to be cast. Former child actor Raven Simone admitted on The View that she was told at age 7, while starring on The Cosby Show, that she couldn't eat certain things because she was getting too big. This experience caused her to have a lifelong struggle with food. Demi Lovato has also been open about their eating issues. Demi remembered that when they were only 3 years old, they hoped that their stomach was flat. People are now fighting back against these standards and advocating for more body positivity in Hollywood, but it's a long road ahead. At number 5, Whitney Houston Whitney Houston's personal life was often a hot topic in the media during her life. People were obsessed with what went on behind closed doors, the good and the bad. Though a lot of her personal life was exposed, one thing that remained a secret until her tragic passing was a horrible incident that she had endured when she was younger. After some digging and a published documentary, the world learned that Whitney was once a victim of inappropriate contact. After the singer passed away, her former assistant told the documentary team that Whitney had once confided in her to tell her about what she had endured when she was younger. The assistant told cameras, quote, Whitney looked at me and said, Mary, I was harmed at a young age too, but it wasn't by a man, it was a woman. She had tears in her eyes. She says, mommy doesn't know the things that we went through, end quote. Though she never spoke publicly about what happened to her, it is believed that Whitney once hinted at it in an interview when she got really emotional when talking about adults taking advantage of children. At number 4, George Michael Imagine being portrayed negatively in the media for basically your whole career just for the narrative to make a 180 after your passing. This is the case with singer George Michael and how his public image changed after he passed away. During his career, George was seen as scandalous and the media really dug into this while he was alive, but after he passed away in 2016, the truth about who George Michael really was came out and it was a very different narrative. He took the secret of his philanthropy to his grave, but many people wished that he was around to be appreciated for giving back to the people. The public came to learn that the singer made many large donations to a wide array of charities like cancer support groups and the Terrence Higgins Trust, which is an HIV awareness group. He kept all of his donations a secret and made sure that no one receiving these donations knew that he was behind it. He was a secret angel giving back to people without receiving any credit, which just shows that this help was genuine, not just for good press. 
At number three, Prince. Another celebrity who was something of a secret angel of sorts was Prince. After he passed away in 2016, secrets about the singer started to come out, some of those secrets being about his philanthropy. One person, an environmentalist who worked for the Green Jobs Act, came forward to talk about one of the donations that they had once received anonymously from Prince, where they said that they received a check for $50,000. At first, they sent the check back because it was so out of the blue and they didn't really trust it. But to their surprise, the check came back again this time with a phone call. The environmentalist then went on to say that the person on the phone said, quote, I cannot tell you who the money is coming from, but his favorite color is purple. End quote. On top of this anonymous donation, Prince also co-founded an educational effort to help teach minority youths technology called hashtag yes we code, and he also made a donation to the family of Trayvon Martin. Speaking out about Prince's philanthropy, his ex-wife said that he never wanted to make these donations public so as to not overshadow the charity or the case. At number two, Anthony Perkins. Known for his role as Norman Bates in the Hitchcock film Psycho, actor Anthony Perkins lived a pretty quiet and private life, but he also took a very big secret to his grave. When news broke of his passing in 1992, it came as a sudden shock to people. But what the public didn't know at the time was that Anthony had been secretly battling a serious illness that he kept from the public. For two years before his passing, the actor had been secretly receiving treatment for AIDS. Speaking out about her husband's treatment, Anthony's wife told sources, quote, he went twice to stay at a hospital and once as an outpatient and we went under another name. You think that this man has spent his entire life giving people so much pleasure in show business and this is his reward. He can't even be himself at the end." End quote. Anthony knew that when the public found out about his condition after his passing, there would be a lot of questions as to why he never publicly revealed his condition, and so before he died, he wrote a statement to be read once he passed on. In the statement, the actor wrote, quote, I chose not to go public about having AIDS because, to misquote Casablanca, I'm not much at being noble, but it doesn't take much to see that the problems of one old actor doesn't amount to a hill of beans in this crazy world. End quote. And finally, at number one, Billy Tipton. Billy Tipton was a famous jazz musician who kept a huge secret from everyone. This secret was so hush hush that not even his closest friends or family knew. Billy had a pretty solid career in the beginning. The 40s and 50s were Billy's time to shine, rising to fame, and taking American jazz by storm. Billy's career started to decline, however, after he declined an offer for a recording contract and to open for Liberace. After that, the musician started to fade out of the spotlight. Light. Over the course of his life, Billy was married five times, adopted three kids, and was considered to be a real family man. But one day, when Billy suddenly collapsed, his secret was revealed. While paramedics were trying to save him, it was discovered that Billy wasn't biologically male. Like I mentioned before, no one knew. Literally no one. So this came as a shock to everyone. It turns out that Billy dressed as a man in order to be allowed into the world of jazz. Because of this huge secret, Billy was forced to live a pretty private life in order to avoid being caught. In the number 10, Paris Hilton's boarding school. In 2020, Paris Hilton opened up about her traumatic childhood after keeping it a secret for most of her life. In her documentary, This Is Paris, Hilton alleged that she'd been subjected to toxic and harmful treatment while attending Coho Canyon School in Utah, which was a boarding school for troubled teens. Hilton revealed that while she was there, she would be isolated in solitary confinement for no reason and be forced to take pills that made her feel numb. Paris and her entire family kept this a secret for her entire time that Paris was a socialite and an A-list star. Along with her difficult childhood, Paris also exposed that her voice was faked, and she made it sound higher to play into the dumb blonde stereotype. In at number 9, Joan Crawford. Back in old Hollywood, they didn't have the beauty products that we have today, and actors were forced to use alternative measures to look their best on camera. Actress Joan Crawford took this to the extreme and admitted to soaking her eyes in boric acid every week to make them, quote, sparkle on camera. She exposed this years later in her autobiography called My Way of Life. When talking about this beauty regimen, Crawford said once a week she'd steam her face, apply a mask, and soak her eyes in boric acid, casually instructing, quote, while the mask is working, place pads soaked in witch hazel and boric acid over your eyelids and put on your favorite music. Obviously, this was an extremely bad idea that could have made her go blind, but she risked it all just to look better. And at number eight, the black box. We are just now scratching the surface of the horrific things that child actors had to endure in the days of old Hollywood. Sadly, one of the punishments adults on set would use when a child actor misbehaved was put putting them in a thing called a black box. This was a closed-in box where the actor was forced to 
sit on an actual block of ice as punishment. Shirley Temple spoke of this box in her autobiography and called it an exploitation of her childish innocence. In her book, she said that if any child on the set of Baby Burlesque Smith behaved, they were locked in a windowless sound booth dubbed the Punishment Box, where they'd be forced to sit on a block of ice. Temple was sent to the box several times in her tenure as a child star. Temple added, quote, far as I can tell, the black box did no lasting damage on my psyche. Its lesson of life, however, was profound and unforgettable. Time is money. Wasted time means wasted money means trouble. And at number seven, Jackie Cooper. Stories like this are so horrible, I truly hope this is still not happening today. Actor Jackie Cooper shared a terrible memory of when he was working on set. While he was filming the movie Skippy, Cooper was not able to make himself cry. So the director, who happened to be his uncle, threatened to kill his dog if he didn't cry. Norman Turog, the uncle and director, left lasting trauma on Cooper. In his autobiography, Cooper said about the situation, quote, I began sobbing so hysterically that it was almost too much for the scene. Tarog had to quiet me down by saying perhaps my dog had survived the shot, that if I hurried and calmed down a little and did the scene the way he wanted, we would go see if my dog was still alive. Cooper ended up earning the nomination for Best Actor in a leading role for his performance in 1931. He was just nine years old, and he's still the youngest nominee ever for the award. And at number six, morality clauses. Back in the day, the studios basically owned the actors that they signed, and they made them sign their life away. Once they became an actor for a major studio, the actor totally belonged to them and was not able to make major life decisions without consulting executives. Many of these clauses forced female actors to stay unmarried so they were more marketable to men. Others even forced women to terminate their pregnancies so they would not waste any time that could be spent filming. The studios claimed that these clauses were to, quote, prevent stars from destroying their value through scandal. Stars like Lana Turner, Judy Garland, and Jeanette McDonald were all held to these clauses and they would disguise the hospital visits and claim they were for ear infections or other- In number five, Daniel Radcliffe. Where does the time go? It feels like only yesterday that we were watching the adventures of Harry, Ron, and Hermione. Although because we were so engulfed in following Daniel Radcliffe bring this character to life, we failed to notice when he grew up. Not only that, but his confession that he had a drinking problem was sadly something that no one wanted to hear about. Thankfully, he beat this in 2010, but the actor himself has revealed that he would show up to the set of Harry Potter still intoxicated from the night before. Daniel said that there were times during his teen years where he felt like he was being watched, and while admitting that most of that may have been in his own head, he still didn't know how to deal with it. During an interview with Off Camera, he said, in my case, the quickest way to forget about the fact that you're being watched is to get very drunk. In an interview for The Guardian, he said that he turned to alcohol to cope with the pressure of fame and potential failure. And as I mentioned, he has been sober since 2010, but said that his friends played a big role in his recovery. Although he did reveal some pretty crazy stuff about being intoxicated while filming Harry Potter. Daniel said, I can honestly say I never drank at work on Harry Potter. I went into work still drunk, but I never drank at work. I can point to many scenes where I'm just gone, dead behind the eyes. That really changes that movie series for me. In number four, Jackie Chan. There are very few actors in the world that have forsaken their health and safety like Jackie Chan just in order to do their own stunts. As a master of the martial arts, he has put his skills to the test both physically and comedically. Over the course of his illustrious career, he has injured himself countless times but somehow remains unfazed. It's most likely because Jackie grew up in a family of risk takers. His mother, Lee Lee Chan, was a drug dealer and his father actually was a secret agent for the Nationalist Guard. His father ended up fleeing to Hong Kong after Mao took power in 1940. 49, and his mother was forced to abandon her first two children due to extreme poverty. Jackie Chan's parents actually met in the most bizarre way possible, a reason for meeting that Jackie would keep quiet for many years. Lee Lee and Charles Chan met when he busted her for drug possession. He ended up taking pity on her and then just letting her go. I mean, what an origin story for this Hollywood superstar. In number three, Richard Pryor. More often than not, comedians have very tragic backstories, and that can certainly be said for the legendary comedian Richard Pryor. The actor in comics struggled with addiction throughout his life, he was married seven times, and even lit himself on fire once. However, his upbringing was even more of a personal struggle. Richard Pryor's mother, Gertrude, was a prostitute who worked out of his grandmother Marie's brothel. When Gertrude abandoned her son when he was only 10 years old, he was left in the hands of his abusive grandmother. Pryor's paternal side also didn't do him any favors. His father, Leroy, was a hustler and a boxer, yet despite his own demons and secrets, Pryor was able to turn his pain into comedy. In number two, 50 Cent. A lot of rappers talk about living a gangster lifestyle, but some of them actually do it. 50 Cent might seem egotistical and talk a big game, but the rapper has had a very tough childhood. The rapper whose real name is Curtis Jackson was born in Queens, New York, and his mother, Sabrina, was just 15 years old when she gave birth to him. Sabrina ended up turning to drug dealing to feed her son and became one of the most notorious drug dealers in the area. Unfortunately, she was killed in 
in an unexplained fire when Jackson was only 8 years old. Still, he would go on to follow in her footsteps with drug dealing and was even shot 9 times in May of 2000. At the age of 19, an undercover police officer had arrested Jackson for selling 4 vials of cocaine and then his home was raided 3 weeks later. He was then sentenced to 3 to 9 years and he went to a boot camp instead to get his GED, but at this time he was already rapping and took on the name 50 Cent, which actually was an original moniker of a broken crook from the 1980s. Bunch of secrets in there for you that you can read on an autobiography page. Last but certainly not least in our number one spot, Keith Richards. Nobody who started their career in the music business in the 1960s, and I mean nobody, has remained untouched by the glorious days of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. This is especially valid for the musicians of the legendary rock bands, most of whom have admitted to having consumed all kinds of substances in their time. But none of those are as bizarre as the one that Keith Richards of the Rolling Stones is said to have sampled. In 2007, a magazine revealed that the 72-year-old guitarist once mixed his father's ashes with cocaine and then snorted him. The veteran of drug marathons was convinced that his father wouldn't have objected at all and added that he went down pretty well. Many years later, Richards realized that being still alive after decades of drug and alcohol abuse was just pure luck. He also advised that others not follow in his footsteps and definitely abstain from snorting their parents. 